Hey guys, Dan here with Vittertech. Yesterday, Apple unveiled a bunch of new products, a bunch of new features at their September event. And along with that, they let us know that iOS, iPadOS, and watchOS would all be released today. Now, all of us developers have had watchOS 7 pretty much all summer to test out. However, there were still quite a few surprises that they announced yesterday at their event. Today, I'm taking you through the top changes and things to do first on watchOS 7. Let's get into it. So like I said, there's a bunch of new features that are coming to watchOS 7, and the first couple of them have to do with the way that you sleep. And what better way to do that than introducing a new sleep app? So the sleep app is a pretty basic app, actually. Don't expect any crazy technology to go into it. It's essentially gonna tell you when you went to bed and when you actually fell asleep and how long that you were sleeping for. Now, if you were hoping for deeper levels of sleep, kind of like you experience with Fitbit and getting into your REM and all of that, well, you're a little bit out of luck there. See, Apple actually released a statement when they first announced watchOS 7 earlier in the year, stating that they intentionally left those kinds of features out because they wanted to focus on the features that people could actually improve. Obviously, it's pretty easy for you to change the habit of when you go to bed and when you wake up, but how deep you're sleeping is not really something you can intentionally change. So yes, you can track how long you were sleeping, but that's about as far as it goes. And to help you sleep better, just like on your iPhone, we've now got wind down and wake up features coming to Apple Watch. So just like on your iPhone, you're gonna set the time that you want to go to bed. And from there, Apple Watch does a lot of things automatically. You're gonna have an alarm set for you automatically. And then before bed, you're gonna to start to wind down. That's gonna automatically turn your phone on do not disturb. It's gonna dim the brightness so that it's not blinding you all night. You're also gonna get a shortcut apps that help you wind down, whether that be listening to music, listening to a podcast, or even just a Siri shortcut to dim your lights. And I gotta say, I wasn't really excited about this feature when they announced it, but using this over the summer, it's actually been a pretty big feature that I use regularly. So as much as Apple tries to implement new features and new apps, I find that the most meaningful ones are the ones that help you change a habit and provide peace of mind without you really needing to do anything, kind of like wind down and wake up. And on that note, we've got a bunch of new workouts as well. So on top of the workouts that you're already using in the workout app, you're now gonna have dance, functional strength training, core training, and cool down. And for those of you who are used to using your activity app on your iPhone, you'll notice that's now been rebranded to fitness. Not a huge amount of changes here in terms of the actual app, but it is a step toward a new service that Apple is implementing called Apple Fitness Plus. This one I'm really excited for. It's a subscription-based service, kind of like what you expect from Peloton, where you get workouts from real personal trainers on demand. And of course, being Apple, it actually takes it a step further. It's gonna implement with your Apple Watch and it'll display your health stats on screen. When a personal trainer mentions something regarding watching your heart rate, it's gonna minimize the other stats and pull that to the forefront. Your stats are gonna be displayed on your Apple TV or any iOS device that you're using the fitness app on. Now that service isn't out yet, it's coming later on in the year, but I'll definitely do a video on that once it is out. Another new feature worth mentioning is that cycling directions are coming to maps. If you are somebody who regularly cycles, that's definitely something you'll wanna check out. And now if breathing and stand reminders were not enough for you on your Apple Watch, we're getting a new one coming into the mix and that is hand washing reminders. So your watch is automatically gonna detect when it hears a sound that's similar to running water and it's gonna realize the motion of you washing your hands and then it's gonna pop up with a fun little graphic and a countdown to remind you of how long you need to wash your hands for. A new feature that we weren't expecting, but Apple announced it yesterday, was a new family setup option for Apple Watches. So if you have children and they don't have iPhones, you can now get an Apple Watch and pair it with the parent's device, and then it'll have things like a cell phone number. There's a bunch of new parental controls that come into play there as well in terms of tracking and limitations, but they're definitely able to market this device as more of a children's device now with these features. One of the biggest features that I think people are gonna be really excited about is fairly cosmetic, and that's new watch faces as well as face sharing. So you can send your own custom face watch to a friend through iMessage, and even brands can post them to their website and you can grab them directly from there. But we've got seven new sets of Apple Watch faces directly from Apple. We've got typography, Memoji, which doesn't really have a purpose. The face just kind of floats around on the screen and smiles every once in a while. I mean, it looks cool, but that's pretty much it. It tells the time. We've got GMT watch faces, which are gonna show you two clocks at once. It's gonna show your standard clock as well as a 24 hour clock on a second dial. We've got Chronograph Pro, Count Up, stripes and artist. And it doesn't stop there. They're also bringing a new suite of complications. So the watch faces that you already have are gonna do more. The stock ones from Apple include shortcuts, sleep, camera remote, moon phase, and world clock. But there's gonna be third-party ones that we can expect in the near future as well as they've opened up that kit. 
So that's the most significant changes that you're going to experience with watchOS 7 when you download it later today. I personally don't find myself using my Apple Watch for apps regularly. It's more for the peace of mind of glancing at notifications and tracking my fitness levels. But that being said, a bunch of these updates do cover that, like the new wind down features, like the new Apple Watch faces for seeing more at a glance, and of course the sleep monitoring. So let me know what you're most excited about here. What are you gonna do first when you download watchOS 7? As always, hit that subscribe button to see more from me, and please hit the like button. It'll tell YouTube this video doesn't suck. Thanks for watching you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.